Good evening and welcome to this Bryan County Patriot Spotlight Game presented by Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad to get to be with you tonight from Calera, Oklahoma. Alongside Jayla McWilliams helping me with tonight's broadcast. It's the Rock Creek Mustangs and the Calera Bulldogs. It is just now underway on this fifth day of January. We are now in 2021 and glad to be here. We have a foul right off the bat, so let's get you the starting lineups for these two teams. The Rock Creek Lady Mustangs, 3-8 and eight on the season under Coach Jeff Counts uh, coming in tonight. Starting lineups look like this. Wearing number 5, Kayla Anderson. Number 10, Bailey Williams. Number 15, Jolie Paris. Perry, excuse me. Number 21, Mara Burka. And number 24, Chloe Russell. It is Williams back up the top of the key again. Calera in a 2-3 zone look right now. A minute gone by. Rock Creek's first possession. Calera couldn't get the shot to fall in a foul on the loose ball after that. Rock Creek will come up empty on its first possession as well. Starting lineup for the Glady Bulldogs looks like this. Calera coming in with a 3-1 and one record. Double zero is Ray Hill with the ball right now. A junior, a senior. Wearing number five is Laney Pardue. A junior, number 22, Cody White. A junior, number 23, Cassidy Mullins. And a junior, number 32, Micah Carlton. Clara Lady Bulldogs coached by Vernon Johnson. Glad you're watching here on this broadcast of the Bryan County Patriot Spotlight Game. BCP Spotlight Game brought to you tonight by Firehouse Subs, Pro Image, k and Designs, and Gallipot Pharmacy. Count the basket as the first two points are on the board. Pardue with two and an opportunity for an and one. Won't fall, but a nice board underneath, and Calera keeps it on the Lady Bulldogs' end. Pardue now from outside the arc. That one won't fall. But Calera will have another opportunity. Rebound not able to be corralled by Jolie Perry. Out of bounds, and Lady Bulldogs have made it all the way to the other end of the court. They're going to stay on their own end right now. Just past a minute and a half gone by, two points on the board. First game of the new calendar for both these teams. Clara with a loss in its last outing. A game with Ashley, supposed to be senior night. That game was postponed. That was back on December 17th, so these Lady Bulldogs have not played since December 11th, and that was a loss at Calera, 38-25, and that one won't fall either, and Lady Mustangs, I believe, finally will get another opportunity to take it to the Rock Creek end of the court. Wins on the season over Colbert, Rattan, and Colbert again. Home and away victories there against two A Lady Leopards from South Bryan County. Have another game on the schedule that's been canceled and another Lady Mustangs turnover. We'll get to the Lady Mustangs schedule again here in just a moment, but three and one on the season, not a bad way to go into the Christmas break and come out on the other side. Looks like both teams trying to shake off a little bit of rust here in the early going. Substitution for Rock Creek. Lady Mustangs will bring in Kelly Williams. And there's a timeout on the court, so we're going to go ahead and keep it right here and say thank you to our sponsors for tonight's broadcast. Again, Pro Image, Firehouse Subs, Candy Designs, and Gallipot Pharmacy. Gallipot Pharmacy right here in Calera. Josiah Schomer and his staff can take care of all of your pharmaceutical needs. Take your prescriptions to... Josiah, and he, as an independent pharmacist right here in Bryan County, can take care of what you need to have done. It's Gallipot Pharmacy. It is just directly across the tracks on Main Street on the east side of the railroad tracks, and 
Lots of construction going on here in Calera still. Seems like once it finally got going in 2019, it has been busy. Still no problem, though, to get, get to Gallipot Pharmacy. Josiah, a big supporter of Bryan County basketball as well. He'll make it to a lot of Calera Bulldogs and Lady Bulldogs games. Limited capacity tonight, though. This is the first game this season here at Calera where you've had to buy a ticket in advance to get in. 50% capacity is what's been asked for as one from long range will finally drop for Ray Hill and Calera now extending its lead to five. Hill on the board for the first time tonight. A steal, Hill takes it the other way off the glass. That won't fall and a rebound Lady Mustangs. And Rock Creek just not getting opportunities here within the first half of the first quarter. Shot blocked. But taken right back. Carlton was there, and she was ahead down the court. I think she was looking for a pass after that block. Right in there, they go back to the 2-3 look. Zone movement now on defense for Calera. Cutter taken away. Carlton got a hand on that. Four on one. Carlton ahead. Hill to Carlton off the glass. No good. Tipped around. But it will stay with Calera once again. And the Lady Mustangs. Stopping the initial shot, but now that's twice after a missed basket. They couldn't contain the rebound, so Calera gets another opportunity. Right wing shot, not going to fall that time for Mullins. There it is again, Carlton stepping in, knocking it away and Hill got ahead of herself. She saw that Carlton was down the court, but also saw a couple of black jerseys there and pulled up, didn't make the pass, and instead she traveled. For the Lady Bulldogs right now, they have to be encouraged by what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball past the midway point here in the first quarter. No points on the board for Rock Creek, and it is due in large part to the fact that they're not letting anything come through passing lanes to get into the blocks. Around the outside of the arc, that's fine. A 2-3 zone is going to give up opportunities like that. Rock Creek has not shown that it wants to shoot from outside the arc. Megan Arnold in the game now, top of the key. Now left wing shot from Anderson. That one too strong. Chase down, and it's going to be carried out of bounds by Pardue, so it will stay with Rock Creek. Lady Mustangs calling the play now. Arnold on the left wing. The paw print of that bulldog paw print. And we have a tie ball. A nice job by White to step in and lock that one up. Pass inside. And once again, Carlton is there. And she has been a force in the lane in the early going. And we have a traveling violation just as Calera got past midcourt. So the defense, again, doing the job for the Lady Bulldogs. Each team, as we mentioned, coming in with three wins. Rock Creek has eight losses to go with those three wins there. Not bad that Rock Creek's been able to get 11 games played here in 2020-2021. Only four games able to be contested so far for Calera. He'll got a hand on it, but Arnold will set it up top of the key again. It's that pass inside once again, splitting defenders, and the Lady Mustangs will get an opportunity on the free throw line as Jolie Perry will go to shoot two. The foul is charged to Micah Carlton. 
And for the junior, just her first. Two team fouls now against Calera. And Perry makes the first and gets her team on the board. Second free throw good as well. Coach counts an opportunity to get a little wisdom to his team. Two on two zone, and it is tight, tight for the Lady Mustangs. They don't want to give Carlton an opportunity to do anything, and they do not. Carlton traveled in the lane. You watch that defense. Five players on the 2 1 2 look there. All five within the lane at one point there, it looked like. Really, really tight. Begging the Lady Bulldogs to shoot from outside. Arnold cutting, fall away jumper, no good. And the rebound by Pardue and well, she was harried a little bit under the basket, so foul charged against Rock Creek. 15 foul now against the Lady Mustangs. Don't forget, we're just a couple of weeks away now from the Bryan County Tournament. Let's see what it looks like this year. Changes have been made across the state, off and on, and hope everything goes well for the tournament this year. A hand on the shot that time. It goes right to Pardue. And that was nice from Hill to Pardue. Looked like it was a pass. Pardue with the basket. And the Lady Bulldogs back on top by five. Pardue with another board. Baseball pass down the court ahead to Mullins. Can't chase it down. She does. Gets it to Carlton. Shot's no good. The Lady Bulldogs will take it the other direction. So nice thought that time by Williams. But stepping in, Lady Bulldogs with the steal. 2-3 look now as the zone is extended for the Lady Bulldogs. They want to keep it tight when it goes inside to Carlton, and that's exactly why. Nice pass. Good look. Carlton with the shot. Credit the assist to Cody White. And Micah Carlton with her first two points of the evening. Less than a minute remaining. Hill with the near steal that time. Outside the arc. Perry for three. Won't fall. She'll go to the line to shoot three, though. Bryan County Patriot, by the way. Excited to be working in conjunction with Mix 96-1 as a part of the coverage of the 2021 Bryan County Tournament. Second free throw will fall for Perry. After she misses the first, she'll get a third opportunity. Kayla Dupree comes out. Kayla Anderson back in the contest. And the another free throw made now. All of Rock Creek's points coming from the free throw line at the hand of Jolie Perry. Lady Bulldogs to just pass this one around a bit. Ten seconds remaining now. Someone's going to need to make a move. Pass into Carlton looking for a cutter back out to Hill for three. Little strong. Loose ball, Carlton with a shot, off the glass, count it. Micah Carlton gets the basket before the first quarter comes to an end. Nice look, good heads up play, and Carlton puts that in. We'll take a break back in a moment here on the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game on Midwest Sports Net. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning, I'm Joey McWilliams. <laughs> I'm impressed with what you got going on, Jerry. Because it's hot. Oh my goodness, it's hot.
This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today. Back here at Calera High School, the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. Presented tonight by Gallipot Pharmacy, by Firehouse Subs, Pro Image and Durant, and by Candy Designs. Second quarter, presented by KD Designs on North First Avenue in Durant. Lady Bulldogs with 11 points make it 13 as Micah Carlton picks up where she left off literally at the end of the first quarter. Not that final basket to fall. And Carlton now with six points, and she has a game-high six on the other end. Well, Perry couldn't get that one to fall. She would have had six. If not, it's Bailey Williams who gets her first basket of the night, and this is the first field goal made. The Lady Mustangs went the entire first quarter without a field goal made. Four points coming from the free throw line at the hands of Jolie Perry. Rock Creek we mentioned. Three and eight coming in, but getting an opportunity to play in 11 games. We have a foul. And... We have an injured player. And Carlton looks like she's going to walk this one off. It's going to be free throws underneath for Perry once again. Carlton will walk this off if she's going to walk over to the bench. Coming in for her is Keela Berryhill, a junior for Calera, as Perry makes the first free throw. Second one doesn't fall there. Perry, five for seven from the free throw line tonight. Responsible for about 71% of the Rock Creek offense right now. Her team trailing by six, and they get an opportunity to cut into that deficit now. Nice steal taken away ultimately by Anderson, and the Lady Mustangs will bring it up to court. Talking about Rock Creek and... That three and eight record. Two and two in the last four games, though. Anderson shot no good. Rebound underneath, kicked outside. Williams can't get that one to fall either. And Pardue pulls down the board, passes well down the court. Mullins chases it down and not able to control it. Hill underneath, so the Lady Mustangs take it the other way. Numbers, Perry will go right into Pardue. Contact, neither person budged. Ahead is Hill, mm, will not fall. And Hill will get it back and have it taken away once again. A little bit of sloppy play to open this second quarter. And finally a foul called. Both teams with opportunities. Neither one able to get the shot to fall. I talked about the Lady Mustangs under Coach Jeff Counts. Two and two in their final four games. Three and six after that. The three wins coming in the final six games before 2020 came to an end. Time out of the court. We're going to keep it right here. And Rock Creek defeated Boswell just before just before the Christmas break started. 52-35 Lady Mustangs and a loss to Lone Grove, lost to Ashley in the consolation bracket of the Bennington tournament after defeating Fort Towson to make it into that fifth place game. Give a shout out, by the way, to Susan Edlin and Janet Reed, pillars in the Bryan County community across the way. I know you can't see them on the camera at the moment, but the nice wave.
Top of the key, and that one a little bit too strong, but the board and the putback will fall for Kelly Williams. Her first basket tonight, and it's back to a four-point game. Pardue wanting to take matters into her own hands, and she was fouled. It'll be the sixteen foul levied against the Lady Mustangs. Kent and the folks at K&D Designs on North First Avenue can take care of your vehicle in so many ways. All the different accoutrements that they can put on the outside, inside as well, sound systems. They can make it light it up. They can make it sound good. All you have to do is go down there and check with them, find out what they can do to get your car souped up because they will get it done. Have you seen the K&D Designs vehicles in the parades in Bryan County, you'll see them left and right. That K&D logo, and those vehicles are sharp. Cars, trucks, and more. Check out K&D Designs. Pardue with an opportunity on the free throw line as Lady Bulldogs were in the bonus as a two-shot foul anyway. And... Neither free throw falls as Laney Pardue is 0 for 3 on the night from the free throw line. Outside the arc, another long range shot and another miss. Mullins will bring it up and pass it off to Barry Hill and back to Mullins now. Micah Carlton. By the way, on the Calera Inch, getting that right ankle taped right now. See if they can get her back in here in just a moment. Right now, Macy Strahan with the ball coming off the Calera bench. Wearing number 10 tonight. Strahan, a freshman. Pardue shot blocked. And here come the Lady Mustangs. Knocked away from behind. Nice job by White to chase that one down. It'll stay on the Rock Creek end. 30-second timeout taken by Rock Creek right now. I mentioned Candy Designs, our second quarter sponsor here. Don't forget about all of our sponsors, Firehouse Subs as well as Pro Image here in Durant, Gallipot Pharmacy as well. Very thankful to all the sponsors for the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game on Midwest Sportsnet's YouTube channel. If you'd like to be a sponsor, check us out and uh, shoot me an email, joey at bryancountypatriot.com. Heading into the new year and lots of opportunities, not only with the video broadcast, but on the actual website itself, bryancountypatriot.com. Bringing positive news and more to Bryan County. Glad to get to be here in Clara tonight. I mentioned a little earlier, you had to have a ticket to get into tonight's game if you wanted to watch it live. First time this season. Looks like that may be something that happens through the second semester. We'll see how long that goes on for Calera. That's why it becomes even that more, much more special to us getting to bring you these broadcasts because there are a number of folks that may not have the opportunity to be here. Running jumper no good. Rebound tipped around in the hands of three Lady Mustangs, and White commits the foul on Perry as she goes strong to the basket. She'll have another two opportunities at the free throw line. One of those shots looked a little awkward coming off of her hand. Sometimes when you're on that free throw line, you know as soon as it releases whether you've made it or not. And Perry continues to cut into the deficits. Now it's just a three-point lead for Calera. And you think with as many opportunities as Calera's had so far, this lead would be larger than three right now. Same thing with as many opportunities missed. So many shots that just have gone awry for the Lady Bulldog or Mustangs here in the first half. You might think the deficit would be more, but it's a tight contest here. Opening week of the school year for many schools, opening day today. Pass inside to Pardue. She's double and triple teamed, but she was the last one to touch it. Couldn't corral the pass, and the Lady Bulldogs miss on an opportunity.
Rock Creek has outscored Calera 6-2 here in the second quarter. There's the cutter and the shot. No good. Rebound, and we have a block out. It's going to stay on Rock Creek's end as White did not give an opportunity underneath for Williams. And with the seventh foul, it's going to bring up a one-and-one one at the free throw line. And you may be able to see the official on the far side of the court giving his explanation. Clearing out underneath. Free throw attempt is no good for Williams. And she won't get another shot. Rock Creek now shooting 60% from the free throw line. Should have a foul this time. Looks like it's going to go the other direction. That's right. A little too aggressive, Kelly Williams. And that's going to send Calera to the free throw line. Another one and one opportunity here. Macy Strahan, the freshman. Rattles that one home. First free throw made tonight for Calera. And just outside the screen at the scorer's table, Micah Carlton set to check back in. And she will, after the second made free throw, give Strahan a breather after two made free throws. And the freshman taking care of business on her end while she's out on the court. Carlton now back, and they move to that 2-1-2 look once again. Carlton with those long arms redirects another pass. Looking ahead, Hill can't find it. Now Mullins. Numbers favor the Lady Mustangs right now, so Calero will reset. Mullins for three. Count it! <laughs> Cassidy Mullins with her first field goal tonight, and it's from long range. Five straight points, a little mini run now for the Lady Bulldogs. With the lead back up to eight. Mid-range jumper, Pardue with the board. Long pass down the court. Lady Bulldogs with numbers, Carlton there, and she'll go to the free throw line. Looks like she might be hobbling still just a little bit, but if they keep finding her underneath the basket right there, she'll have opportunity after opportunity. And Carlton with six points tonight. Took a breather a little bit earlier. Can't get either free throw to fall. It's going to stay with Calera, though. They say Arnold, Arnold and Purdue both going for it. And Rock Creek touched it last. Nice look away pass by Hill. Finds Pardue cutting through the lane. She's fouled. She'll go to the line. And that was smooth on the inbound. Lady Pardue's been to the free throw line three times already tonight. That's the fourth, and the result's been the same. Minute and a half remaining here in the first half. In one place Calera can look. Right now up by eight. That lead could easily be double digits. Calera two for nine from the free throw line. Another bomb down the court. Mullins, the cutter. Nice job. Rock Creek getting back on defense. Burka was there. Part two for three. Laney, part two with seven points tonight. 
Maybe 15 feet. That was too close. Need to be out there about 20. Nice look underneath the pass. A little bit of a screen out, clear out that time, but it made things open up. And Jolie Perry came through. And by the way, that is her first field goal of the night. She has eight points tonight. Another one for long range. Count it. Ray Hill that time. It's going to be backcourt, out of bounds. We'll go ahead and call this one out of bounds. Could have been one or the other, and Arnold's just going to let that one go. And now Calera has doubled up on Rock Creek here as the first half is winding down. Lady Bulldogs starting to get a little bit of offense going on. Calera will be content to let time tick away here in the Rock Creek defense. Not going to extend. Inside, outside, five seconds left, and Coach Johnson calls a timeout with 6.1 seconds remaining. Didn't like the pass back outside. Don't forget the boys game will follow this one. It will be a separate broadcast here on Midwest Sportsnet. Well, Claire will get one more opportunity one way or the other, but it's going to have to be off the inbound. And we'll see where they inbound. It's going to be side out. And the way the Lady Bulldogs have been running this play, it's going to work well or looks to be favorable. Hill with an opportunity. Hill open for three. Little strong. And time will run out here in the first half. That is it. Calera on top. 24-12. Lady Bulldogs have doubled up on the Lady Mustangs here on our BCP Spotlight game on Midwest Sports Net. Second quarter was presented by K&D Designs. Thanks for watching. Stick around right here. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment here on Midwest Sports Net. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. <laughs> I'm impressed with what you got going on, Jerry. Because it's hot. Oh my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm gonna have lots of fun today.
Welcome back to Calera here. The second half getting ready to be underway here as the Rock Creek Mustangs trying to cut into a 12-point deficit and very nearly backcourt as the ball is thrown into here to start the second half. Rock Creek wearing the road black jerseys, blue numerals, trimmed in gold, shot no good that time by Williams. She has two points on the night. Three fouls, though, as Bailey Williams and Kelly Williams each in a bit of foul trouble here for Rock Creek. Lady Mustangs trailing by 10, make it, excuse me, 12, make it nine as Mara Burka gets that one to fall. Her first basket of the night is from long range. Burka in the contest for the Lady Mustangs as well as Kayla Anderson, Bailey Williams, Kelly Williams, and Jolie Perry. Perry leading all scorers in the first half with eight points, six of her eight coming from the free throw line. It's a nine-point game. Lady Mustangs not out of this one, although Calera really asserted itself in the last two or three minutes of the, of the first half. Inside pass to Micah Carlton. It won't fall, but she'll go to the line to shoot two in the first foul here in the second half. Fouls charged to Kayla Anderson. It's her second personal first team foul as Micah Carlton on the line to shoot two, and she is now 0 for 3 from the free throw line tonight. She has six points. Second free throw won't fall either. Rock Creek had gotten it down to a three-point deficit after trailing by nine at the end of the first, or nine in the first quarter, seven at the end of the first quarter. Passes inside to Perry. She has another field goal made. She has ten points on the night, and the first five points here in the second half go to Rock Creek. Got it down to a three-point deficit. It was extended once again all the way up to 12. Pass inside to Pardue. Her shot won't fall. Tipped around the board. Off. The foot of Kayla Anderson. And we've seen this time and time again for Rock Creek in this game. Forcing an errant shot, but not able to come away with the loose ball on the rebound. Pardue one dribble. She'll kick it outside. Kayla Berryhill has come back into the game for Calera. Long range jumper, no good, a little short, maybe a little bit out of range. And the ball taken away by the Lady Mustangs, and Hill got ahead of her, excuse me, Perry got ahead of herself. Jolie Perry, with 10 points tonight. And another unforced error by the Lady Mustangs. I want to say thanks to all of our sponsors tonight bringing us this BCP Spotlight game here on Midwest Sports Net. And those sponsors include, as Mullins goes to the line, or will go to the line, those sponsors include Gallipot Pharmacy, k and Design, Firehouse Subs, and Pro Image in Durant. Daryl and Melissa Holiday have a great sports store in downtown Durant. Well, maybe not what you might consider downtown. It's it's actually on Washington, 1205 North Washington to be exact, but it's in town in Durant. How's that? Mullins makes the second of two. I like to shop there. They have so many collectibles clothes, fun things to get with your favorite sports teams. That will fall up and off the top of the board and rolls back in. How about that? And credit to Jolie Perry, by the way, for not giving up on the shot. She flung that up and it was in the right place. It drops and an opportunity for an and one. Or did they not give that to her? Looked like they gave it to her. They did not give it to her. Excuse me. Doesn't matter. She'll get two points anyway. 
So it did hit the top of the backboard. I thought it did, but it looked like that they had given her the points anyway. Meanwhile, it's down to a six-point game. No-look pass goes awry. Arnold steps in with the steal. Three on three, stops, jumper, a little short underneath. The rebound goes to Williams, and we have a tie ball near the baseline. I like the placement of the jumper there. It's one of those shots that, and for Arnold there, that opportunity's been open. Just have to get the shot to fall. No basket, three seconds in the lane. The crowd for Rock Creek begging for that call. And the official does make the call. So the call just before the three-pointer went in. That was a nice look, by the way, for Ray Hill. Arnold's pass inside, shot no good, and Perry. Perry's going to go to the line once again. Jolie Perry now, 8 for 11 from the free throw line tonight. She has a game-high 12 points. Travel. Hill took a step one direction before she took off dribbling the other. You know, I was talking about Pro Image in Durant again, Daryl and Melissa Holiday. Store's been around for about a year. And it's really one of those cool places. You know, often you see stores sporting, not just sporting goods, but the collectibles, the clothes, the hats, things like this. You see it in them all. Don't see them very often in a location like the one on Washington. Carlton steps in once again, gets the steal, and Calera will slow it down. To finish that thought, though, it is a great store filled with so many things from very likely your favorite team, college or pro, and if they don't have it, they can get it for you. It's Pro Image and Durant. Arnold slows down, stumbled, kept her triple, though, and props to her for that. The two zone is extended for Calera, and they get the steal. Lady Bulldogs get the steal. Lots of pressure, specifically from Barry Hill, coming out to harass the Lady Bulldogs. Or Lady Mustangs, excuse me. Pardue, double teamed. Somebody's open. Carlton kicks it back out. Top of the key, Mullins, and that won't go. Great job by Barry Hill. She chases it down, tips it around to herself. Carlton has it, and now Hill. That one won't fall. Carlton with another board. Now it's Barry Hill to Pardue. Off the glass and in. And Pardue's going to get credit for the basket. She has nine points tonight, but you have to give credit to Keila Barry Hill and as active as she was on that possession. Kept the ball on the Calera end of the court time and time again. Hill with the steal. Coast to coast, left-handed off the glass. Ray Hill has two points. And it's back to a double-digit lead now for Calera. Had some technical difficulties with our camera in the second quarter. Looks like you can see the score and time accurately now. Shot from the corner, a little strong. It's going to stay with the Lady Mustangs, though. There's that two zone extended again. Mullins coming out. 
Passes inside, and we have a foul. Williams allowing Barry Hill to come up and pick up the foul there. Cody White had three fouls at the end of the first half. Barry Hill picks up her first. That's the fourth team foul, though, against Calera here in the second half. Kelly Williams makes the first of two free throw opportunities. Second one, no good. Carlton there with the board. She's tied up immediately. And Williams there, and it's going to stay with the Lady Mustangs. Possession arrow keeps it on that end. Oh, what a great job by Williams. Just get in there and reach in. Three-point attempted once again. This time it will fall for Burka, her second three-pointer of the night. She had that look a little bit earlier. Didn't go. Didn't give up on it. Six-point game again. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. BCP Spotlight game here on Midwest Sports Net. Thanks to Pro Image here, our third quarter sponsor. That one slung in the general direction of Carlton, and she couldn't bring it in. So the Lady Mustangs hanging around, hanging around. Anderson in the lane, tries to split defender. She can't do it. Kicked out. Perry, count it. Jolie Perry has been the biggest source of offense tonight for the Lady Mustangs. Right place, right time. She's been to the free throw line often enough. Eight for 13 there and two more points. Carlton has her shot blocked. Burka, after the three-pointer made, credit that for the block. And the Lady Mustangs take a timeout. Rock Creek within four points now and with the ball. Don't forget the boys game will be broadcast on a separate broadcast here on Midwest Sports Net's YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. Consider subscribing to the channel. We would appreciate that. It helps out quite a bit. Coach Count's talking this one over with his team. Down 12 at the break. Cut two-thirds of that deficit away. Rock Creek will play again a little bit later on this week. Scheduled play in the Kanawha Tournament and facing Holdenville in the first round game. 3A Holdenville. That's the Lady Mustangs draw on the Kanawha Tournament Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's where Rock Creek will be next. Trying to pick up win number four here. Actually, both teams trying to pick up win number four here. We mentioned Rock Creek 3-8, and eight, Calera 3-1. and one. Perry, baseline, jumper. This one won't fall. Anderson was there, but Carlton tipped it away. Perry gets it back. No good. Put back. No good. Another opportunity. And this one's tied up. Calera will have the possession arrow this time. Less than a minute remaining here in the third quarter. And the Bulldogs... Now, the Mustangs now have shifted this defensive look now. It's a man-to-man, -man, so they're going to extend it out and force the Bulldogs to work. Time still sticking, ticking away here in this third quarter. Twenty seconds left now. I thought the Lady Mustangs might force a shot prior to now. And there's a foul. Fouls to give here. 7.8 left, and now the Lady Bulldogs will have to inbound on the baseline. 
Anderson out. Arnold back in. Run the inbound play over to Hill. An opportunity. Barry Hill for three. No good. That was close, and time will run out. Will it run out before the foul is called? It will not. We have a foul charged to, I believe, Cody White just before the end of the third period, and that is exactly the case, and that is foul number four to her. We're going to take a break. We'll sort this out and be back with eight more minutes to play here on the BCP Spotlight Game on Midwest Sports Net. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. Because it's hot. Oh, my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today. So the foul charge to Cody White. She has four now, and it's a little bit of foul trouble for the junior. Played aggressive defense. No points tonight for White. Laney Pardue leading the way for the Lady Bulldogs. She has nine, and Ray Hill has eight. Micah Carlton with six points. She hasn't scored here in the second half yet. Does come away with a loose ball. Will get credit for the steal there. And White with the ball on the left wing. It's Pardue, Carlton, Hill with the three-point attempted and long rebound. Pardue comes away with it, just rips it away. Mullins and White also on the court there for Calera. Look down low to Carlton. Double team spins around. She's fouled. It's going to send to the line to shoot two. Maybe a bit of a touch foul there. Didn't see much contact. The foul's going to be charged to Kelly Williams, and that's her fourth. So Kelly Williams on the court right now, along with Megan Arnold, Bailey Williams, Mara Burka, and Jolie Perry. Carlton makes the first free throw attempt. Can't get the second one to fall. Five-point game, though. Calera came away with at least a point in that possession. Points have been coming at a premium tonight, so everyone big. The steal, and Hill has it. Mullins. She'll go to the line to shoot, too. I want to say thanks to all of our sponsors for tonight's broadcast. Pro Image in Durant, as well as Gallipot Pharmacy right here in Calera. Candy Designs. And Firehouse Subs. Firehouse Subs in Durant. Quentin and his staff, <laughs> they make some great meals. Absolutely fantastic. If you haven't had a chance to try Firehouse Subs, they've been around for a little while now. Those are great subs. I'm, I'm a fan of the Italian. I have to tell you. That's my favorite. They cater, too. Perry tries to move to the basket, misdirected, and now the foul is going to come. This one on Carlton. Pardue, and a credit to Pardue, she doesn't move. She stays home. And Jolie Perry is on the court right now, favoring her leg. Both teams are going to take a little bit of a timeout now as they attend to Perry on the court. The 
looking at her on the sideline. Jolie Perry, by the way, tonight with 14 points. I mentioned eight for 13 from the free throw line. Mara Burka has six points for the Lady Mustangs. Kelly Williams with three, and Bailey Williams with two, accounting for the 25 on the board now. Have that opportunity to keep on talking about Firehouse Subs for just a moment as uh, they're located 2501 West Main in Durant on the south side of Main Street there. Heading west side of town. Again, I'm a fan of the Italian. So many different opportunities, sandwiches and more there. See Quentin and his staff at Firehouse Subs in Durant. Crowd applauding now as Perry is going to walk this one off over to the Rock Creek bench. Sub coming in now for Rock Creek. Chloe Russell, who started tonight's contest for the Lady Mustangs, checks back in. And you see Perry on the far side. She's in the middle of your screen. Uh, walking in the corner of the gym. Looks like she's going to be able to walk this one off, and that's always encouraging to see. Williams, by the way, was fouled. She missed the first free throw. Gets the second one. No, she does not get the second one because the ref said she was over the line. So... Still a six-point game now. Perry's been big on offense tonight for the Lady Mustangs, and if she has an opportunity to come back in, I know that Mustangs fans will be happy to see that happen. Pardue receives the pass, and she goes up strong. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Laney Pardue with nine points tonight. Pretty effective tonight, not only on offense, but on defense for the Lady Bulldogs. And she'll make that free throw opportunity. Second one good as well. And you know what? She made those look so easy. She was 0 for 5 from the line prior to those two. But she made them look so easy. There on defense, the pass. Look inside, off the glass. Nice job. Chloe Russell, her first field goal tonight. Coming off the bench in, in place of Jolie Perry. She's still stretching on the Rock Creek side. And, boy, that's some welcome offense from Russell. I always wonder about players when they come off the bench. Even though she started, she'd been on the sideline for a while to come in. And what's that first shot going to look like? Looked good. Hill, long three, count it. Ray Hill into double digits now. Another three-pointer, that's her third tonight. And the lead went from six to nine. Perry's going to check back in. Williams, pass outside to Williams. Had nowhere to go. And dragged that pivot foot. And Chloe Russell. Did her job when she came in for Perry. Jolie Perry's checked back in. Lady Mustangs outscored the Lady Bulldogs 13 to 5 in the third quarter. And nice job, Micah Carlton with two. Near steal, ball's on the court, stays with Rock Creek. Here's Perry driving in, drives into Carlton. Contact, no call either direction. And both of these post players for Rock Creek and for Calera have 
come up a little lame at different times in the game tonight. Perry's going to fight this one through. Both knees are braced. And without trying to diagnose this, looked like she was favoring the ankle, though, when she went down a while ago. Burka for three, count it. Mara Burka with another three-pointer tonight, and she has matched Ray Hill with three three-pointers on the evening. Pardue for two. Back to a double-digit lead. Midpoint here in the fourth quarter as time is running out. Calera can afford to let a little time come off the clock with each possession. Not going to do it there. Pass inside stolen, then taken back. It will stay on Calera's end as White chased that down. Again, Cody White with four personal fouls. Three-pointer a little short as Purdue pushes that one up. That shot won't fall. More contact. God didn't really like the no whistle there. Perry splits defenders, drives in. She'll go to the line. And we'll see who this is going to be on. And the way Cody White's getting up, she thinks it's going to be on her. And that is the case. Personal foul number five on Cody White. The junior will go to the bench with no points, five fouls, but great effort tonight. Perry's first free throw, no good. You know, the legs are a big part of shooting free throws. And if the legs aren't right, sometimes that'll throw that free throw off as well. Perry favoring a leg right now. So she goes one for two, nine for 15 from the free throw line tonight. And talk about what that means, too, is the fact that she's made it to the free throw line as many times as she has, forcing the issue time after time, drawing those fouls from Calera. Pass to Carlton. She goes up and over Burka, can't control the ball, and she loses it out of bounds. And that was tough. Burka gives up a lot of inches size-wise, the high pass inside, and, and Calera Crowd doesn't like the call or no call as Carlton fell down. Point probably could be made for traveling also there as well. Here's the double team and the steal. Another Calera steal. Nine-point advantage, less than three remaining here in this contest. Calera trying to pick up win number four to go with just one loss on the season. Hill for three, too strong. Long board will go to her. According to the schedule, Calera will have to wait another 10 days before the Lady Bulldogs get to play again. January 15th at Turner. Pass inside to Pardue, left-handed off the glass and in. Laney Pardue. And she has a game high 15. Hill tips it away. One on two, no numbers. Mullins will kick it out. Lady Bulldogs have a little bit of time with which to work now. Mustangs are going to have to come out and try to force the issue now. And they'll do that still in the zone. That foul is charged to Kayla Anderson, and it's her fifth as well. Subs coming in. Anderson will go out. And Russell comes back in for her. Pardue on the line with another opportunity. First free throw is good. 
I have to tell you, she started out slow from the free throw line, but the way she's making them now, she just makes it look so easy. Macy Strahan back in the game for Calera. And a 13-point advantage for the Lady Bulldogs with a minute 20 remaining. That may be enough in this one to win this Bryan County game. Jolie Perry's three, no good. Rebound underneath, pushed over. Burke is there. Mara Burker with her first made basket inside the arc. We keep it right here. I want to say thanks, by the way, to Jayla McWilliams, my camera person for the evening. Appreciate her. And she's done a great job on camera tonight. Tell you what, when you hear your name from your dad and you don't know what it's all about, she was a little concerned, thought she might be in trouble there. Not in trouble tonight. I want to say thanks to my family. Joseph McWilliams, regularly on camera as well. And, of course, to all of our sponsors tonight. Of course, the fourth quarter brought to you by Firehouse Subs, Pro Image, Interance, K&D Designs, and Gallipot Pharmacy. Voice game will follow this one. It will be on a separate broadcast. Clara has closed out each quarter. Ticking time away, but you have to think the Rock Creek's going to try to make something happen here. It hasn't happened yet. I think they're waiting. We'll be waiting to see when the freshman gets in, gets the ball. I think that's actually what we're looking at. Brooke Crenshaw, by the way, in the game. Couldn't wait too long. Straight, uh, excuse me. Foot Crenshaw in the game for Rock Creek now, wearing number 22. More subs coming back in. As Crenshaw and Arnold will check out. Williams and Russell coming back in. Now you can't let too much time go off the clock. There's a plan. Maybe we'll see if what the freshman can do from the free throw line. In the meantime, you have to tell somebody to stop the clock, and Lainey Pardue is that person, and she makes her fifth consecutive free throw. Misses the next one, rebound. Lady Mustangs now with an opportunity. Spin move by Perry. Trying to get an opening, but time ticking away. Burka for three, and that one won't fall. Chase down. Twenty seconds remaining. Calera going to pick up the fourth win of the season as Perry gets that one to drop long range. Count to three for Jolie Perry. And Rock Creek calls a timeout with 15.3 remaining. So we'll see what kind of substitution that Coach Counts makes right here. And, okay, here's what Coach Johnson wants to know. Did it hit the top of the backboard? Saying that shot didn't count earlier. It did hit the top of the backboard. I don't know if it just hit at the corner if that makes a difference if it rolls need my rules specialist up here well rock creek at the end of the night unless there's a nine point play somewhere that we don't know about will fall to three and nine on the season. And again, we'll be playing the tournament a little bit later on. Little knee, little hip check there. We'll send Pardue to the line to shoot a one and one. Calera playing at Turner on the 15th. Rock Creek in the 
Kanawha Tournament on Thursday night taking on Holdenville. Pardue misses the first free throw, rebound, missed as well. Ten seconds remaining. One more opportunity for a shot here. Perry will take it, right wing three, count it. Jolie Perry with back-to-back threes will give her 20 points at the end of this contest, but the result is still a Calera victory. 45-39 is the final score. Calera with 4-1 and one now on the season, and Rock Creek drops to 3-8. and eight. For Jayla McWilliams, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks again to all of our sponsors of the VCP Spotlight Game, which include Gallipot Pharmacy, k Designs, Pro Image, and Firehouse Subs. Boys game will follow this in a separate broadcast. Thanks for watching, everybody. God bless you. Have a great night.